Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, a few weeks ago, a gentleman contacted me via email. He saw my YouTube video about where's my Ferrari, and um, I was really blown away by his story. Uh, so much that I really wanted to do a Zoom call with him and have him share his story with all of you. Without further ado, here's Gary to share his CNC motor story. All right, so we have uh, Gary on Zoom today, and um, he saw one of my videos on YouTube and uh, reached out and turned out that uh, him and I have not only a similar story, but almost could be the exact same story. Uh, and, and I'm gonna shut up for a lot of this and I just wanna hear from him and uh, about his experience buying um, something. And uh, well, anyway. Yeah, so I guess to start off, I'll, let's hit on the similarities, which is freaky. We're both 39. We both bought a Ferrari 360 with 41,000 miles from CNC Motors. We both previously had a Porsche Cayman. We wait, both... wait, wait though. Our Ferrari, uh, both of them are also red and tan red, interior. Both red with tan interior, that's right. Um, we both got screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm missing anything else? I think that's about it, right? Well, let's see. You had uh, maybe some similar type of repair issues too. Uh, yeah. Beforehand. So, yeah, so when, you, when you reached out to CNC, how did that go? Uh, in terms of the repairs? Well, actually, let's start from the beginning. Just, like, we'll start. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's just go from the beginning. Okay, so I was in the market for something special. I've been, you know, it's been a tough year. Been saving up money for the last ten years or whatever it is. Um, don't have kids, so I thought, you know what, this is the time to buy a ridiculous car that makes no sense. I've always loved Ferraris. I did look at other options like Audi R8s even like those, the cheapest Lamborghinis. Went and drove an R8, liked it, but the boot was too small. I actually did that at CNC. Uh, and while we were there, they had a black um, 360, which was a uh, manual, which I think had just sold. And I was just like, oh man, it's just so beautiful. I know it's a little bit older. I was originally looking at, you know, 2016 R8 or something like that. Mm. I know it's a little bit older, but it just is beautiful. Just sort of fell in love with it. I was like, oh, you should, yeah, I'm sorry, we, me and my girlfriend, we should just get a Ferrari. It's beautiful and we're never going to have another chance to own a silly car like this. Okay. Did all our numbers, decided the amount of money we could afford and then basically spent a couple of months just trolling the internet, trying to find a car, the exact car we wanted. Um, Can I ask you where, what websites were you using? I found mine on Auto Tempest. I, um, just the standard ones like Carfax and what's okay. the other one? car sales I, I was I, I honestly looked at was looking at every website everything yeah everything. An eye and, and putting alerts for when 360 would come up um and i'd also spoken to cnc and said if, if one comes up let us know and one did come up and that was in october last year uh so i went and did a test drive uh, i was about to go overseas that was the other thing so at that time it was still you know, middle of COVID, we were going to go to Australia uh, for a couple of months. Um, and, but we thought we, because I've been looking for months and knew that this was the car, had the right miles. I didn't mind about having high miles. I just wanted to have something that we could drive that would, would be fun and would be in the price range. So um, went into do a test drive. The test drive did not go amazingly because the, the tires on the car were completely bald. So literally the first time I hit the accelerator, the car just was, was moving everywhere. Um, and I couldn't actually test the acceleration at all. Uh, couldn't really drive it properly, but I could tell that it worked. So um, I believe at that time we put in an offer and but said pending a pre-purchase inspection because I was worried that I hadn't had a chance to properly drive it. It did look, it looks clean and looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, got the pre-purchase. And, and also finally got our hands on most of the, um, the service history, missing like the last three or four years, but everything leading up to that, which looked fine. Mine was missing uh, until 2017. There was yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's weird. 
I was the other way around. I had everything up to about 2017 and nothing since. Um, and oh, kept, I mean, that's what I'm at. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Um, and he kept saying, oh, I'm talking to the guy and I'll be able to get him and blah, blah, blah. It never happened. So I just thought, oh, we'll get an inspection anyway. Um, got the inspection. The inspection came back basically all clear. Um, there's a little bit of wear issues in the car in terms of like the leather and stuff, but to be expected at 41,000 miles, nothing did, major. Did you have your inspection done um, at CNC or like a, another party? Oh, I, I hired another guy to drive to CNC and he did it. And I wasn't in the country at this time. So I, oh, I okay. was in Australia in quarantine actually. And had a guy from, I did, did a little bit of research and just found found someone online that specialized in um, sports, older sports cars. Um, so him, he, he went out there, I think it was $400 or something. Um, basically, the biggest issue was that um, we were going to need the timing belt replaced at some point within the next six months. So when we did the final deal, I was like, if you put new tires on the car and you do the timing belt service, then we've got a deal. And that was in late November by this time in 2020. Um, they said, basically they didn't really go for that. And I ended up paying for the timing belt, a not full amount, but who knows, it would, was cheaper than if I'd taken it to Ferrari to get it done anyway, which is probably what I should have done in the long run. But You and me both, my friend. <laughs> um, so then, get back in January, um, finally get the car. We go to CNC, excited to pick it up. We paid for it and everything, did the handover. Everything seemed great, actually. Um, took some photos, we drove home in it. It was great, everything worked. Took me forever to figure out where the windows were and maybe like the petrol, how to open the petrol thing, but little thing. <laughs> But it still gets me every time. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Or, or how to um, open the front boot, right? Yes. Like you have to have the key in it turned on a little bit and then yes. you can unlatch it. Like, yeah, you have to, you, that's right. Yeah, you can't do it without a key in, which is, took a while to figure out. Um, uh, yeah, so that was all good. Got home and I, I must live 50 miles from CNC. Um, so that drive was actually okay. It was the next day I drove it and it immediately had a check engine light. I called CNC and I'm like, oh, something wrong with the car. Keep in mind, they just serviced it and done the time belt because it hadn't been serviced in a year or two. Right. Now, okay, we'll take care of it. Um, so I gave it back, back to them. So even... Even worse, on the drive back to them, it completely went dead and didn't work. And so on the freeway, so I had to, we pulled over in some random place, had to get it towed to CNC. Whoa! Luckily, my I just put in my insurance, and it was literally within one mile of the limit of my free towing service. So didn't even need to get them to pay for it, which was very lucky because wow, they probably wouldn't have paid for it. Um, so got the car in there. Um, so when it when you said that it died on the side of the road, like what what happened? I mean, like did the engine shut off or it what? it just started going really weird? So I was turning. It did it did shut off. I was actually like changing lanes to go onto the turn onto the freeway, and it completely stalled. Um, and then. I restarted it and it did drive, but then it was it was beeping at me and, and flashing check engine, check engine. Okay. Um, and I pulled over and called them. I was like, can I drive it the extra whatever it was, 24 miles to make it there or should I get a tow? And they're like, don't drive it. Me call a tow. So, so then we got it towed there. So then we went to Australia again, and but it was still in the shop and we hadn't got it back. Can we leave it? with you guys until we get back um, because uh, like otherwise we're just going to have to tow it. I don't have anyone there to put it into my garage. Oh, right. Um, so but at this point, still nothing. They were still being nice and there was no, no, no real concerns. So this was January this year. So then what? Uh, yeah, so then we were, we were away for a while. And 
when we got back, uh, we did pick up the car and that was okay. And it, but it did, it then broke down on the way home. At this point, I also expected when we got home for there to be the title. In that period, we'd also switched um, addresses. So I thought we'd have the title. We'd put on an auto forward on our mail. But I figured the issue was because we'd moved, that's why the title wasn't there. So I wasn't too worried. And I just, um, so firstly, I took it to Ferrari because I was fed up with using CNC. Paid for them to properly fix it and they properly fixed it. And it cost me a fair bit, but not, wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't the same sort of money you're looking at. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but it, things had been done wrong, apparently. Um, and they hadn't correctly diagnosed what the problem was. Okay. Um, forgive my non-knowledge of technical stuff, but they tell me what it was. I, I don't remember, but it now. You know, I want to. I want to say something about that because I get a a lot of comments on YouTube about being the most ignorant Ferrari buyer ever, basically. <laughs> and you know, I kind of, I think of it like this, right? Like, uh, we're inspired as kids, and we see these things, um, and we could be car guys and all this stuff. Uh, but we are not mechanics. We have our own lives and jobs and expertise and specialties and different things. And not everyone can know everything in the world. And, and especially about these type of supercars, they were made in a funny way. They're just very quirky. And it's like, you know, I don't blame you for not researching. I mean, when I got my car back from CNC the last time and the wheel fell off, I'm sorry. I didn't think I needed to check all of the lug nuts yeah. before yeah. driving, you know, like you I just don't, don't have know. to check that. <laughs> See, and so like, it's totally not your fault that you don't know this stuff. It's just like, you know, when we buy something as a consumer from a company, we trust that company that they're going to give us a product that, that we should expect. That's right. And, and I've, I've bought ne never anything this expensive, but I've always loved sports cars my whole life. And I bought old esports cars, bought a Porsche 944, 1984 for like 12 grand. And I knew there was going to be problems. You, and I kind of knew with this, there's probably going to be some issues. That's just the way yeah. it it's an older Ferrari. It's got 41,000. I accept that. But like even the guy who did the pre-purchase didn't find anything. And it was, it was and he's, it's his professional job. Um, wow. And he didn't really find anything. The, it was actually just my research of the, the history of the car that figured out that it needs a timing belt replacement, which I had done the research online, that that was a big thing that was going to cost some money. And I wanted to try and make, try, you know, ideally the car has it done before you buy it, but um, it didn't. So yeah, like, man, it's hard. And, and I've also bought cars from way sketchier places than CNC and had no problems whatsoever. Um, and well, so then you had contacted me like fairly recently because you said you were out of the country, right? Or yeah, like, I've been you traveling didn't know any bit. of this stuff. Okay. No, so so at that point I was still like, oh, um, I assume there's a problem with the address. So I, I messaged CNC guy who I bought it off, who'd been always replied to my messages immediately, and just said, hey, I didn't receive the um, the title. Um, they said they were going to send the plates. I'm like, I haven't received them. Have you got the right address? Maybe try this address. Or can you tell me if it's you sent it? Blah, blah, blah. No reply. So then I called the, um, at this point, their website was still up. Um, yeah. And funny enough, my car was still up on the website until like three and a half months after I bought it. I think uh, yours was still actually on the site because I kept inquiring about it, trying to buy it. <laughs> and uh, and they're like, no, 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 it's gone. Our our web guy, he's really flaky. Uh, they never update the website. I go, man, well, you, you got a lot of cars on there that I would love to check out, but what's actually there? And and I'm in a different part of the state. Uh, for all those who are um, not familiar with the U.S., California is incredibly large, and so it's very difficult for me to go to the southern part of the state. And so I was really, I probably put way too much trust into them. And, and just like you did, or, or all of the victims did, um, we don't it's know. All, it's all normal stuff. Like, of course, people don't, and it, people don't update their websites for a number of reasons. One being that 
you leave the cars up there so that someone inquires about the old car and you go, oh, actually, we just sold that, but how about this one? So that's not like, that's not the end of the book. I, did, I didn't, didn't raise any issues. I just thought they were being annoying and they were just being typical used car salesmen. Yes. That's what you get. Um, and it wasn't until, so then I was like, I didn't, I couldn't get through to them on the phone. I was like, hang on, let me see. It was a couple of days passed and I was getting a bit annoyed. I looked at their Facebook and um, the first post on, the first comment was like, you're ripping off, you committing any more fraud, um, Clay or something. I was like, huh? Was that? <laughs> I down in the comments and I see these things. I'm like, oh God. And then I did a search, CNC murders fraud. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, is this me? Am I wrapped <laughs> up in this? That's and I'm I like, thought. no, yeah, it's like, no, it can't be me. They just haven't set my title. And then, then I watched a couple of videos on um, Nice Guy Supercar. What's that? Uh, Dan, a uh, uh, normal guy supercar. Normal guy supercar. And then I somehow went around and found your video. And I was like, oh, my God. And th that was like an emotional roller coaster that day. Because I went through different stages going, I think I'm fine, to, oh, my God, this car's stolen, to, oh, my God, no, it's probably fine. Um, and just went through all these crazy, crazy things. Um, and then, yeah, then reached out to you, um, and spoke. And since then, I guess we've, we've spoken and tried to get lawyers, but it's all a bit of funny, weird thing at the moment. You know, I don't know if you saw, uh, one of the videos, I was like, I don't know, four or five videos of Dan, uh, at normal guy supercars channel. He talked about this with the lawyers. He goes, you know, he feels for people like us in this situation because we could spend all of this money on a lawyer, right? Like I've heard, um, I'm part of a, like a group chat with some people and everyone's saying minimum $10,000 to get this done. And I was like, okay, if I spend that $10,000, is everything free and clear? Are we good to go? No. Yeah. No, we can, what they're advising us is, uh, yeah, we can go after CNC. We can go after the owners, the sellers of these cars. But I'm thinking that's just a complete waste of money because CNC doesn't have any money left. Exactly. Yeah. Their dealer bond publicly is stated that it has run out. They've changed addresses. The building is empty. And you and I, unfortunately, are the smallest guys, I think, in this. Yeah, I'm sure so. you've seen that. And he owes so much to so many to where like, okay, we're the small guy. If we spend that $10,000 and the lawyer's like, well, we did our part. I don't know. Exactly. No. If no. our car was a $250,000 car, 10 grand worth That's it. different. But it's a lot of money for me. Um, and what's more, I forgot to mention, immediately when I first got the car, I went and got all this stuff done to it. Reversing camera, new radio, um, entertainment system, all this stuff put in, and then also got time built. So I've spent like eight to 10 grand on the car while I still thought the title was coming. So then it's right. like, that was what, when it all happened, I was like, oh God, I spent all this money and I might have to give the car back to someone who gets a better car than what they, get, they originally gave to Clay. Oh, they better buy you a drink or something for that. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I think about that as well with mine. And it's like, I think all of the owners of these cars should really not spend any money until this is cleared up legally. I really advise yeah. that to a lot of people. As the lawyers have said, and I think at the end of the day, um, we bought a car legally from a licensed dealer. Um, so the law does help us, which is good for us. It, it sucks for the, potentially for the people who haven't been paid. Because the main thing being that because there's so many people who haven't been paid, are they going to be in, it's going to be tough for people to get their money. Um, yeah, I, um, impossible for people I really to get don't screwed. know. I mean, there's no winners in this. I mean, you and no. I, yes, have possession of the cars. That's, that's one thing. So, you know, in our favor, but really, I mean, I was advised to don't park it out on the street. You know, somebody yeah. could just come and repo it or something. I'm like, what? Mm. And they're like, they don't care about your sales contract or anything. They'll just take it because a phone call was made. And I'm like, wow, like living in fear 
um, and yeah. living uh, it, well in my situation with the repairs and all that stuff it's like man I now I have a very expensive garage art piece um, mm -hmm. I don't know but I don't know what to do with that and I'll get into that in a different video but uh, <laughs> I, think, I, I, um, I, did, I, I do have I had a friend who had an interesting idea he's like you know you can hire them as prop cars they don't have to be registered and you just sell the movies can use them for it <laughs> not the worst thing ever because i live in la where that shit actually happens yeah um, well i mean uh yeah i'm a business owner and part of me buying my car was i it was an investment i was going to lease it to my company for photo shoots and different things um at least well not mine's not really drivable at the moment so i can't even do that but yeah you can rent yours out make a bunch of money <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. I, the whole uh, thing is so shady. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen with all this uh, or the timeline of it even. I just, it's so big, but also there's still so much going on. I mean, maybe is this going to happen for a year? Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm the same. And to me, like, it was literally all, all my savings. It was a big deal for me. This was not a, if it becomes a problem, I'm going to be in deep shit. Um, well, you know, I just have to start all over again with another, save up for another eight years. Just well, I, I hope, you know, for everyone um, in, involved in this, that that hopefully won't be the case that we can maybe do a, a rebuild of the title somehow um i know you briefly touched on it there is that fund for those dealerships the fraudulent ones that for uh victims like ourselves that we can tap into uh but i don't think a lot of the public knows that the cap on all of the cars involved are thirty five thousand dollars. that's right and um you know it's that's okay if you got a honda civic um but yeah and i especially feel for those guys who was selling or buying two hundred fifty thousand dollar cars which isn't yeah. isn't us, but thirty five grand doesn't really doesn't really cut it. I really hope for everyone's sake that Clay actually does have some money. Maybe he owns the building. I don't know. Hopefully, and that they can actually get. It might take time, but hopefully he can get some money. They can get some money out of him. We everyone can. So that's the only way there's going to be any um, proper end for everyone. Otherwise, there's going to be fifty percent of the people are going to be. Um, screwed screwed yeah Less, very screwed. Grand, yeah uh yeah it's um it's a horrible situation well uh gary i i appreciate you uh sharing this um i hope that uh that one day sooner than later you and i can ride in our red and tan ferraris into the sunset with a drone we'll get shane uh he was one he was the one that really tipped this whole thing off with um dan at normal guy supercar and and that's how i found the the whole situation i was just like oh man this sucks that my car is wrapped up in service with cnc it's hundreds of miles away from me um uh, whatever my life sucks but i can't complain too much i got a ferrari but then i saw that video and i was like maybe i don't have a ferrari <laughs> uh and so anyways um yeah, well, hopefully, uh, I'm sure we'll be staying in touch. Uh, yeah, the like if we sort it all out, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. Drive and um, a review of our actual cars that work. In, in a proper way, then, for sure. In probably a year's time, I think, if everything goes perfectly, we might be able to do it. <laughs> well, that's it. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, and commenting. Um, I'm in the process of filming a really stupid video about my current situation with my car. Uh, so please stay tuned and um, I appreciate all of your support. Thanks.